Hello, and welcome to Corbett's Comments. God's Word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. I'm Dr. Otis Corbett, and I invite you to explore a portion of the Bible with me today. Specifically, I want to share a word about how to reach our potential in Christ by knowing right from wrong as I comment on 1 Corinthians 6, 9-20. This passage reads, Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. But you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach and the stomach for food, and God will destroy both one and the other. The body is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. And God raised up the Lord, and He will also raise us up by His power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them, a mem make them members of a prostitute? Never! Or do you not know that he who is joined to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For, as it is written, the two will become one flesh." But he who is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the sexually immoral person sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body." If we want to reach our potential in Christ, we must realize that we live in an age that is at best amoral, but which is most often really immoral. You'll hear many voices say, I don't know what is right, and, and nor can I tell you what is right. Others will say, well, this was right for me, but you must decide for yourself what right is. The concept of objective moral truth is alien to a large portion of our population. We've returned to the days of Judges 21-25, which records that in those days there was no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. The fact is, however, we have a king, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Our God is sovereign over all creation, and He has given us His law, the Scriptures. So what does the holy book teach us about how to tell right from wrong? Because if we want to prosper in the Lord, we need to be able to tell right from wrong. First, we should learn the holiness principle. We've been set apart for service to God. Often we set items apart for specific purposes. For example, surgical instruments or those clean rooms where space satellites are assembled. Jewish families who keep kosher will have different dishes reserved for dairy products, so for example, that the meat would not be mixed in with it, according to Exodus 34:26. Now, on their own, these items are not precious, except for the purpose to which they are dedicated. When we set things apart and when we reserve them for specific purposes, we're declaring ownership for them and we're de declaring control over them. We are protecting them from contamination and we are preserving them. God has set His people apart and He has reserved them for specific purposes. He has declared His ownership of us and His control over us. He's protecting us from contamination and He is preserving us. We are a sanctified people, but do we live as if we are? Besides the holiness principle, next we should learn the help principle. We must discern what helps us 
to serve God. Paul told us that all things were lawful for him because of his salvation in Christ. But he also said not everything is helpful. See, we can do things that don't hurt us, but they also don't help us. These are things like eating chicken soup when we have a cold or carrying a rabbit's foot. They don't help us. They don't hurt us. But there may be a waste of time. However, there are other things we can do that don't help us and actually hurt us. Uh, These are things like drinking and smoking and eating too much, especially of the wrong things. Fortunately, some things we can do to help us um, tremendously are available to us. There are some things we can do that are helpful to us that we can take advantage of, like Bible study, worshiping God, fellowshipping with other Christians, and getting exercise on a regular basis, sleeping uh, enough, and, and taking care of our lives and our bodies. You see, we can do anything we want, but we must realize that some things are a waste of time and other things are wasteful of our spiritual health. We need to embrace the concept of liberty as opposed to freedom. That's the ability to do what is good, not just what we want to do. So besides the issue of of help and the issue of holiness, there's also the habit principle. We should learn the habit principle. We must practice what helps us to serve God. Habits are powerful. They can trap us, but they can also make us more consistent in our walk with God. So we must be careful in forming our habits because they are difficult to break. It is true that we can form bad habits, like not worshiping God, like exposing ourselves to the wrong materials, not exercising or eating too much of the wrong foods. It is equally true, however, that we can form good habits like attending church regularly, reading the Bible, spending time with family and friends. Addictions, which are very difficult to overcome, are really a type of habit where we resort to destructive behaviors in an effort to feel better about ourselves. We can find ourselves into a Uh, getting into a descending spiral as we turn to our addictions to feel better. Now, that results in us feeling guilt and feeling bad about ourselves, after which we return to our addictions to feel better, and the beat goes on ad infinitum until we destroy ourselves. We must intentionally develop good habits, or we will fall into bad habits. Finally, we must learn the honor principle. We must practice what honors God. See, we must give honor to our Lord. In our passage for today, Paul said that we are to glorify God in our bodies. This means more than just praising God with our lips, although we must do that also. What this reminds me of is the question asked during that tremendous song, that anthem, My Tribute. The first verse asks, How can I say thanks for the things you have done for me, things so undeserved, yet you gave to prove your love for me? The voices of me and angels could not express my gratitude. And that first verse ends with this statement, All that I am and ever hope to be, I owe it all to thee. We must give honor to God because He redeemed us from slavery to sin, and now He owns our souls. He demands and He deserves our praise, and not just our lip service, but also by living our lives for Him. We owe God our very best in every aspect of our lives, from our thoughts to our attitudes to our behavior, and yes, to our praise. It needs to go deeper, though, than lip service. It needs to be all of our lives that honors and glorifies God. In conclusion, if you want to know right from wrong, you need to know God. We need to know Him personally, spiritually, and exponentially. And once we do, He will give us His Spirit to guide us from the inside of our lives. Thanks so much for visiting with me today. I'll be back soon with another word from the Bible that we can share together. Every blessing, I'm Dr. Otis Corbett.